L'shem Hashem na'aseh v'natziach. Thank you everybody for joining us tonight. We're gonna we're gonna learn about um, today's question is some yeshivas they have a um, custom to do Purim spiel. Purim spiel is like a performance, and in Israel they call it Rav Purim. They bring like a fake rabbi to the podium, and then he ridicules and makes fun of uh, the head of the yeshiva, the dean of the yeshiva, and all the teachers. Is this acceptable or not? So Rav Ovadia Yosef, if we look in his beautiful work, Chazan Ovadia, he t- brings it down in his other encyclopedic works of uh, Yabia Omer and Yechavadat, Resh Aleph, page Resh Aleph, he says, Rav Ovadia is adamantly very against this. Now let me clarify, because Jews, we have to have fun, and there's nothing wrong with being humor. They actually think uh, Robin Williams was on a talk show in a thing in Germany. So the host asked him, why we don't have any funny people? In Germany, we don't have much humor. He said, because you killed all the funny people. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with humor and laughing and mili de but we know that the most paramount and colossal thing we have is our leaders. And if our leaders are like, we're lost, we're like sheep without a shepherd. So to take this holy day of Purim and use it. To make fun of the rabbis, Rav Ovadia brings many reasons why it's wrong. First of all, he says that it's a terrible sin even for to be jolly and merry in the spirit of Purim and just say, oh, it's just a joke. We make fun of the rabbi, like the rabbi walks like this and he has a cane or, you know, they make fun of his antics. Those that have been in the yeshiva know what I'm talking about. And this Rav Ovadia says is pure letzanut. Letzanut is a negative type of humor, you understand? It's where something is supposed to be holy and off limits and exalted and we bring the stature down. And King Solomon in Mishle says, you know what? Sometimes a person neglectfully, he starts shooting arrows randomly and then somebody gets shot by the arrow and he says, oh, I was just playing, I was just trying to, uh, you know, some of these, you know, certain words, especially in today's society where we're so influenced by the goyim, that words could really pierce a person's heart. And if this guy's your mentor, your teacher, he's, he's, he, he, you have to respect him even more than your father. You know why? The Gemara says a very important thing. <clears throat> Let's say you have a lost item. Okay? You know, there was a big storm in Louisiana this week. So there's a big storm. You and your rabbi live next to each other. This rabbi taught you everything about Torah. And you see two wallets going down the stream. You can either save your dad's wallet or your rabbi's. The Gemara says in Baba Metziah, you have to save your rabbi's because your father gives you this world. But your chacham, your mentor, your spiritual leader gives you the next world. And the next world is what? Unlimited. So therefore, nobody can say, oh, we're just, we didn't mean any evil, and we didn't mean any malice, and we didn't mean any animosity, and we didn't mean anything disparagingly. No. It's like the person that shoots arrows and somebody gets hit and he says, oh, it's just, you know, you have to go to a shooting range to shoot arrows. You can't just randomly shoot arrows at people. And we know the whole reason why Jerusalem was destroyed, look at the Gemara in Shabbat, page 119. The Gemara says, The root of the poison, the toxic poison, which caused our holy temple to be destroyed, this holy temple that you see behind me, is because the people, did, they made fun. They ridiculed the Torah scholars. As it says in the passage, 
that they made fun of the angels of God. And a true chacham, a true spiritual mentor is like an angel to you, you know. And they ridiculed his words. So, it's not a small thing that the Talmud in Shabbat tells us that one of the main reasons that it was destroyed, the temple, was what? Because they ridiculed and made fun of what? The Torah sages, the Torah scholars. <coughs> so, Amarav, and so much so that in the Navi says if you make fun of a Chacham there's no there's almost no medicine Teshuvah you can do for what you've done you know why? because the Chavetz Chaim talks about this a lot and Rav Avadi is going to bring it also the worst Lashon Hara you can make or the worst type of sin you can make is making fun of the leader of a community that's supposed to teach people Torah and fear of heaven. Because if you say, ah, he's not worthy, he's not qualified, he's... and you bring down his stature, then people don't ask him halachic questions, and then people are like, like we just learned in the Gemara Sota, people are like in darkness, right? Because they have no... So, nobody to guide them. So... There's another Gemara, fascinating Gemara. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai had a son, Rabbi Lazar. Him and his father, they wrote the Zohar together. Mm -hmm. Rabbi Lazar was a hard-headed person. He, unfortunately, the Gemara says in Bava Metziah, he got into an argument with the rabbis, <laughs> and he didn't rule with the majority. So you know, you're entitled to your opinion, but we Jews, we believe in democracy of the rabbis, which means, Achare Rabbim Lahatot. If... Et, or else any rabbi would have his own religion, right? So, we have to go with the majority of opinions. But Rabbi Lazar was so sure of himself, he refused. So you know what happened? The rabbis didn't let him to be buried. It's a whole Gemara there, over the uh, oven, whether it was impure or pure. So Rabbi Lazar was kept in his attic. And every, his wife would go check on him. He was so sadiq, his body didn't even de de decompose, you know? Because, and then one Friday, one Shabbat, his wife came to check on him, and she saw that blood was coming out of his ear. Mm. So then she got all frightened that he's gonna, his body is starting to decompose. So you know what happened? He came to her in a dream, and he says, don't think, don't worry, my body's not gonna decompose, because you know, sin causes the body if somebody's pure sadiq, even his body, he doesn't think of both. But he told the wife, you know why blood was coming out of my ear? Because one time, somebody made fun of a young Torah scholar, and I didn't reprimand him enough. I should have been more strong in my rebuke of that person. How dare you? So since I heard a Torah scholar being made fun of, and I wasn't strong enough to my response, that's why blood is coming out of my ear. So we see from here, that not only the person that gets up, and starts making fun, like all the antics of the rabbi and stuff, and so on and so forth, not only he is mistaken, but the whole audience that laughs, also, because, like the Rav Avadya brings, Lashon Hara, the Gemara says, who's worse? In some ways the person... The people that listen to the Lashon Hara are worse than the person that say it. You know why? Because if people wouldn't listen to the Jerusalem Lashon Hara, the person would, if they would shut him off and say, get out of here, shame on you, would he continue doing it? They're the one that's feeding him. Allowing him to... Uh... Oh, they're like, wow, yeah, this gossip, this happened. So, just like Lashon Hara... It's forbidden whether to say it, and in some ways worse to be the audience to listen to it. Same way, if I'm Purim, instead of doing a positive thing, you go to a concert or a gathering where they're making fun of the head of your yeshiva. Rav Avadya is adamantly, so bitterly against this. And I'm going to tell you something amazing at the end of this book. End of this shiur. So, the Rambam brings something unimaginably fascinating. You know what the Rambam says? Look at the Rambam in 
Helchot Deot chapter 7. The Rambam says, a person that says Lashon is so toxic, you shouldn't even leave him. You, it's forbidden for you to be neighbors with him. Because, <coughs> Oy Rasha, Oy So, Rav Avadye says, Ki en la'alot al-adat shebishfil simchat purim ye mutar la'avor al-isurim hamurim ka'ele. So, some people, they think Purim, you could get drunk and bring out all your bad habits. Right? That's absolutely wrong. Purim is not a visa or green card or passport for you to start doing something where we're going to see. It's such a horrible thing that you're playing with your eternity, your, your olam haba. Look what... Um, and we know that the classical thing the Rambam says is King David starts Tehillim. You know what Tehillim, the first chapter of Tehillim means essentially? Yeah. King David starts his most magnificent book of praising God. And he says, lucky is the person that has good friends. He doesn't walk, talk, sit, associate, sit in the same gang of people that make fun. That people that are ridiculing holiness, right? Rather, he's dwelling into Torah. So, it's not, you're not allowed, Rav Avadya says, even to be a passive audience in this show that they are um, ridiculing. And the Mate Moshe brings down this idea that Purim is a day that we have to be, you know, guys, Purim has the potential. To take us even higher level than Kippur, you know that? The Ariza says, Yom Kippurim. Yom Kippur is the day like Purim. Which means, since on Yom Kippur we're frightened because the books of death and life are alive, so the, the, our relationship with God is out of fear. But what's a more meaningful relationship? A relationship out of love. Purim, we saw that God is behind all. Nothing is coincidence. And we re-accepted the Torah. And if you do tap into the energy of Purim, you can get to a higher level than even Yom Kippurim. Because mm. Kippurim is like Purim, the Ariza says. So, Purim is a day, not that we bring out all, all our bad habits and throw away the yoke of Torah. Rather, this is a very, very big sin to ridicule Chachamim. And this is, Purim is no passport for us to be able to do that. And really this is what the Rishonim say, the Yosef and the Me'ayri, that Purim, see there's a big misconception of what happiness is, you know? Some people, in Judaism, happiness, and this is our whole mission on Purim, our whole mission on Purim is, to become so, so jolly and happy, elevated, closer to God, right? Not a day where we're a drunken person that's happy-go-lucky and doesn't care and says bad words and, you know, ugly stuff. He acts like an ugly person and like a drunken, crazy person. Mm -hmm. This is taking you to, you know, a higher level. And therefore, letzanut, making fun of holy things and holy rabbis, which are like angels to us, is, is totally wrong. Now, some people will say, okay, but for hundreds of years, this is the custom of the yeshivas. By the way, this was never the custom in any Sephardi yeshiva. And I want to give a disclaimer here. The crown of Torah, I don't want to make a, sound like a person that I'm anti-Ashkenazi, heaven forbid. The amount of respect that we have to have, I personally have to have to my yeshiva in Baltimore and to the Ashkenazi rabbis, which they had the crown of Torah and they, their prestigious yeshivas really saves, you know, world jewelry. And um, it's only been a recent phenomenon that Baruch Hashem through the works of Rav Avadia Yosef, we have many yeshivas around the world. But we are trying to focus on the truth of Torah. We're not trying to be political or God forbid put down and say we're superior. But we have to call a spade a spade. And if something's wrong, 
So the Talmud Yerushalmi has a concept. You know what it says? It says, Minhag mevatel halacha. Sometimes a custom even overrides what? Halacha. The Talmud says in Yerushalmi. So you could argue to me, hey, it's a custom of the yeshivas to do this poor and fun thing. And don't be such a sourpuss. And don't ruin our uh, fun. But Rabbi Vadia counters to that. And he says, a custom is only a holy custom. A custom which is doing, making fun of the most sacred, our mentors, our spiritual leaders, is, uh, is uh, you know, minhag could also be spelled gehinom. You know that hell? It's the same words, minhag and gehinom. Is it the same gematria? No, same words. If you ch- change the, how the words are coordinated, minhag and gehinom are the same thing. Oh. Actually, minhag backwards is gehinom. <laughs> so some customs belong in hell. <laughs> they're, wow. they're, it's, it's, so Rabbi Vadia says, like the Rivash brings, one of the great poskim in Mem, Memdal, it says, if, we, if, if, person, if people in a community have a custom that's clearly against halacha, we don't say, oh, the Talmud in Yerushalmi says, it's so sacred our customs and it overrides halacha. No! You have to teach people that to nullify that Minhag. So, Rabbi says this is one of the minhags that he's totally super, super against for people to have this custom. And all of the post is say this. So therefore, some people want to... De- now there's another group of people that they want to defend this... Um, making fun of rabbis on Purim and say... The whole idea is just to be lighthearted, and it's not to really make fun of, make people feel bad. But again, the the thing is, is that about this Kohelet, King Solomon, it says, making fun. I said is lishok amarti mehulalu simchamaze. Sometimes it's not appropriate. Not every thing that makes you fun and jolly and joke is appropriate, right? right. And um. If the rabbis even, the rabbis of the yeshiva are part of the play, they're in the audience, it's even worse. Because we know it's even a bigger chutzpah, it's a bigger audacity. You know why? Because spilling somebody's blood is synonymous to what? Killing them. And like the Gemara and the Mishnah says, Hamalbin If you make fun of somebody, spill somebody's blood and make him read in public. It's like you're spilling his blood. And the Toswad and Rabbeinu Yona goes so, so much and they say literally, we learn it from Tamar, you know, Yehuda, Yehuda's daughter-in-law. It's better to die and not even do such a thing. Mm-hmm. It's literally like murder. So, and we know that the, the, the Gemara says over here that people that do this, they lose their share in the world to come. So, just trying to keep a custom that is instant gratification, you're praying with fire. You're literally praying with fire. It says, En And just to make this, Rav Avadya brings one of the greatest rabbis of all of Europe, the Khatam Sofer, Rav Moshe Sofer. He had a great dynasty. His children, grandchildren were all the chief spiritual leaders of Hung- Hungary and European Judaism. The Khatam Sofer had a son. His name was Mikhtaf Sofer. Rabbi Shimon Sofer. He died. He, almost, he had a heart attack and died because they had made fun of him in public in one of these, wow. you know, gatherings. Listen to this. He says, Niftar mirov agmat nefesh ekev divre almanus. Since people, because see some people, they have good taste, some people have bad taste. But you don't know. You want to get the crowd laughing. You know how com- comedians are. And to make comedy out of making fun of rabbis, it may be a, something that pierces the heart and it's totally inappropriate. And the, the Khatam Sofer, one of the most famous rabbis of the last hundred years, son died from this. Because, so therefore, heaven forbid, this thing should even continue, Rabbi Vadia says. And wherever such a thing is done, it should be 
everybody, the people that are, believe in truth, should do everything in their capacity to get rid of such a um, such a custom. Now, some people will also get, say another claim. They say, hey, if the rabbi, if the administration of the yeshiva was against it, why do they let it happen? And they're in the audience and they even laugh. So it must be, we know that there's a law. Every time your rabbi comes in the room, you have to stand up in front of him. But if he, the, the rabbi tells you specifically, you don't have to, there's Allah. Harav shemachal al kevodo kevodo machu. That if he's not particular about his honor, then you don't have to enforce his honor. So that's why it's okay to make this funny, fun, make a fun thing. But Rav Avadia brings from the Rivash in, chap, in Teshuvah 120, Chav, Resh Chav, in the name of the Ra'abad, the great antagonist of the Rambam. And he says, that that we say you can not honor your rabbi like you're supposed to get up in front of him and you don't. Okay. But if you, if you, Bizayon, you know what Bizayon means? No. The rabbi has no authority to forgive if somebody smears him. Bizayon is totally, totally, exactly. A very, very bad way of making fun. Sarcastic. No, no, no. Bizayon is, um, you just wipe the floor with the person, you know? Right. You make fun of him. You make the person um, embarrassed. So, there's one thing not to honor a rabbi, because your, your rabbi doesn't want to inconvenience people always to get up in front of him and this and that. But to go ahead and proactively be nasty, that's like Bizayon. That, the Radvaz says even a father can. Because that's already not in his authority for him to forgive that. So this is a, a lot of this stuff, you know, people in comedy, it's like people have bad taste. You know, they want to get the crowd roaring. Yeah. And they, they, a lot of times you see they cross the line. It's just disgusting. And even the rabbi doesn't have the permission to forego somebody, you know, being disgusting towards him. is bizayon. You know why? Because God doesn't let that, you know? It's not, it's not your personal permission to be able to do that. And the, uh, the Trumat Adeshen, and there are many post can hold of this <coughs> idea. And just to let you know, a lot of times it could be peer pressure. The rabbi, okay, he says the previous Rosh Hashiva, this, you know, whoever started this crazy custom, it could be that... That that he's, you know, forgiving is just what? He really deep down gets hurt in his heart. But, you know, for political reasons, he doesn't, he wants the people, the students to be able to have a good time. So it could be, it's not sincere that he's forgiving the students, you know, for that. And one of the great rabbis that I'm such a big fan of, Rabbi Moshe Sternbach Shlita, which is the chief Ashkenazi rabbi of Jerusalem, of the Eid HaKharedid, in his book also says that this is just ridiculous. It just should be annihilated. It should be stopped in its tracks to make fun of Talmidei Chachamim. And a lot of it could incorporate Lashon Hara about them. And uh, it's embarrassing. You know, these are very severe sins. To do it also as a, in a coliseum, in like, you know, as a gang. And... These things, uh, you know, you're playing with fire, you're playing with some of the things that you could lose your share in the world to come. <coughs> and even, he goes as far as to say on Purim, you have no, nobody gives you the right even to make fun of your friend, a regular person. So, so much so, somebody that's a giant, somebody that's your mentor, somebody that you have to respect like heaven, right? Mm -hmm. he's, he's somebody that's, more important than your fatherly figure. He's the person that's showing you all the key to what? To Ghanaian and how to get up there. So, and he says, you know, 
you you causing them pain and ha pain is is totally totally wrong. So um, just to summarize, I want to tell you an amazing thing. Rav Avadia says that uh, it's totally wrong to make this whole Purim spiel where Chachamim are made fun of and it should be stopped. And I want to tell you an amazing thing. My personal mentor, which I had the honor to be Meshamish and very close with, Rav Yaakov Moshe Kalevsky, one of the Rosh Yeshivas of Baltimore, one of the first things he did when he became head of the Rosh, Rosh Yeshiva, head of the Yeshiva, he stopped it. He said, you're not allowed to make this Purim mm. um, spiel. You know, gathering where they make fun of the Rosh Yeshiva and how he talks and this and that. And he said, even until Mashiach comes, va'ad bichlal. He said, even after Mashiach, we don't allow this in the Yeshiva. And he stopped it actually. Now, I, I want to also say something, like I said before, that it's a shame that Kippur, you know, this is the Satan always is trying to get a back door, you know, from the back door sometimes, try to take away such an exalted and truly remarkable day that we could get to colossal and to the truly unfathomable levels to make it a day where people spend an hour of their time attending such a play where it's a shame, it's a shame to waste it and... Um, just as a final word to the wise, I hope that people follow what Rav Avadia and Rav Sternbach and Rav Kalevsky uh, Ben Chaim Lechaim said. But also, you know, people that, you know, it's very hard to change people once they've been doing something for hundreds of years. You have to be very, very careful. The people that put out these videos or make these plays, you know, to have a sense of not being mevazeh, because if they do, they're literally paying with fire. And us Sephardic Jews definitely never had such a custom. We wish everybody truly have a high and joyful Purim. Please don't forget to subscribe. Have a wonderful day.